Greetings all and welcome to my latest vlog. For those of you who follow my work, you know my three passions in life are woman, Africa and the arts. And I always speak to those three passions uh, from a place of experience, from a place of love and uh, a place of agency. And so this vlog, I want to look at the reality of PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder, and the reality of being triggered and hopefully give a bit of insight on one, what one can do when one is triggered. So let's break down the word triggered. When somebody is triggered, it is usually related to a past trauma. And it can happen at any point in your life. Uh, we, I'll go into the the intricacies of what happens to our bodies when, when, when we are faced with trauma and abuse. But basically what happens with triggering is that it takes you back to that place where you were hurt, where you felt traumatized, where you felt fear. And it can be an event that can, that can trigger that. It can be a person. It can be an organization. It can be a taste, a smell, a sensation, anything. Uh, anything that your body remembers uh, when you went through that trauma, that event is then relived in, in, in a present time. And why I wanted to focus on this and why I speak so candidly about my experiences is that for too long, society have told us that we need to be quiet. For too long, um, abuse and what happens to people is seen as a taboo and often blame the person who's being abused. And so... This is why I talk about it, because I know that some of the reactions and some of the things that I go through, uh, many times, many people feel the same, if not even worse. So why I needed to focus on this was that last week, Saturday, uh, I won't get into the intricacies, but I was in a situation where I suddenly was triggered by a past event that involved an uh, organization that involved other people. And being a survivor, you often go into warrior, or I call it the commando mode, where you think, okay, well, I can get through this, I can deal with it, and I will deal with my trauma and my healing later. But often the body tells you, actually, no, this time you're not going to deal with it, and you break down in different ways. Uh, for me, uh, sweating, I started crying, I had heart palpitations, and... Um, and the feeling of ang anger and hurt and a whole lot of things came back which were triggered from, from, from the initial uh, trauma that had happened. And the unfortunate thing about when we go faced with trauma, not all of us have the privilege of just taking time out and taking a couple of months to rest and do what we need to do to, 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 to process the pain. And so life goes on. And with me, life went on. So Tuesday, I had to get up, get to work. I had a, a couple of speaking engagements. And one of the questions that came after I gave my talk, and it was a talk on abuse and how I overcame and how I'm still overcoming um, certain instances that had happened in my life. One of the questions that came through were, uh, how do you deal with the pain and how do you make it go away? And that was such an important question is that because when trauma is inflicted on us, the first thing we want to do is, okay, let's just make it go away and life will go back to normal. Unfortunately, life doesn't go back to normal. However, the healing through counseling, through support and so forth, helps you to adapt to that pain and be able to help you cope with, with, with the pain that is now inflicted upon you. So we never go back to normal, but the counseling and the therapy and the healing are coping me mechanisms. So when you do go through certain processes, you know how to adapt them to a certain life. And, you know, we're all different. We're all different emotional creatures. So some people react differently to different instances. So moving on to, 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 to today's topic and looking at post-traumatic stress disorder and why it happens and, and how it can affect your body in so many different ways through depression, through suicide, suicide thoughts. There's a the physiological aspect of uh, people suffering from illnesses such as uh, fibromyalgia um, 
sleeping disorders, you have flashbacks, uh, sweats, um, loss of breath, heart palpitations, anxiety attack, attacks. And you must understand when, when trauma happens to our body, um, it happens on two different levels. So it happens on a physiological level and it also happens on a neurological level. So when our body is then faced with this fear, um, we react in three different ways. Um, and, 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 it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's pushed through either the sympathetic nerve system or the parasympathetic nerve system. So the sympathetic nerve system is, is triggered when our body um, either wants to react to a, a scenario or react to pain through um, fighting or flighting, which is running away. In the parasympathetic nerve system, that is when our metabolic rate is reduced, our heart rate is reduced, we slow down, and in some cases, people freeze. So an example of this, and a lot of the naysayers or the protectors of, of perpetrators always ask the question, well, if he was violating you or she was violating you or raping you or sexually abusing you and you didn't scream, uh, was it rape? And the answer to that is that of course it is still rape because you and all of us do not have a control on how our body reacts to situations when we're placed facing fear or if we're in a lot of pain and a lot of hurt. And that is why... Um, depending on what our reactions are, and we can have different reactions to, to the same level of abuse. But our healing process in each one is very, very, very different. And that is when post-traumatic stress then comes into, in, into play, it's because we're triggered by past events, or we also haven't processed the pain that is associated with that abuse or with, associated with those events. Um, and then it has a ripple effect on, on our life from sleeping disorders, from um, distancing ourselves from scenarios, distancing ourselves from, from situations that might remind us of that, or just going into recluse, because remember, a lot of people are forced to, to live with their abusers, and now with, under the COVID-19 restrictions, even when they started, um, people were then forced to live with their tor tormentors 24-7. So why it's so important, and why I always talk about, about these, and why healing is so important, because when the pain happens, it's not very easy for many people to process their pain, and so that takes a lot of time. And then when the processing of the pain happens, then you need to adapt and change certain circumstances in your life. And so with closing with, with this topic and why it's so important for, for organizations, for corporates, for our government to really support um, the notion of providing adequate psychosocial uh, support and counselling because one or two online sessions with a counsellor is not going to heal a wound, and especially if it is a, an abuse case or abuse, a, a multiple abuses that have been happening over a long time where the person hasn't processed the pain over these multitude of abuses, uh, how is that going to happen in two or three sessions? And also the most important thing about, about trying to heal and get out of this is that finding that help through the counselling where you can through therapy, but also creating those, those support structures that you know are safe spaces. And, and many of us want to help and many of us want to create those safe spaces, but you also need to be realistic about whether you have the magnitude to create that safe space. And that's okay if you don't. But understand that triggering and the stress and the post-traumatic stress disorder can come at any place. And if that triggering happens within a safe space or within people that that person has opened up to, um, it can have really adverse effects on, 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 on that person healing. And so another question that came to... to, to, to me this weekend, and this was through another session that I had, and somebody said to me, you know, in, in my, in my bi biography, Reclaiming the Soil, I, I speak about past abuse cases, and um, the second one that I spoke about, I dealt with it very differently. And uh, the person that asked the question wanted me to go into why and how I dealt with that differently. And so the first time uh, I was abused was a boyfriend was when I was at university, 
And because we didn't speak about it back then, it was 1994, uh, there was still a huge taboo hanging over. I mean, the taboo is still here, but it was a lot worse back then. And so when it happened, we were just told, just, you know, deal with it, you'll get through it, forget about it, and then move on. Not realizing that if you haven't processed this pain, it, it manifests and comes up in other areas of your life. And so fast forward almost 20 years later, uh, there was an incident that happened uh, in another country where my nose was broken. And um, obviously it was, it was traumatic because it was a fight that had broken out between people. And granted, the, the, the person wasn't meant to hit me, but he was meant to hit somebody else. So, so the force was behind his fist. And what had ensued afterwards, there was a lot of victim blaming. I, know I was blamed for a lot. Um, a lot of intimidate, intimidation. Uh, fortunately, because of my, my activism career, which started in 2003, where I did my training through a, a women's organization, and I did my training on counseling and myths and misconceptions around abuse, I was equipped for that. But at the same time, because I was in pain and, and fragile, um, the process and understanding it was a lot more real. And so how I chose to deal with that was that I chose to deal with each and every emotion that came my way. And when we are faced with trauma, and, face, and trauma is, is rather inflicted on us, uh, we go through a multitude of, of emotions from pain, from fear, from anger, from frustration, to, to gratitude, to laughter, to happiness. And so that is the way I started to process my healing. And I was fortunate. I mean, I spoke, came, I was doing it from a place of privilege where I could take off time and process those different emotions. Um, and that was to build me up so that I could operate properly in my world and in the work that I do and what I needed to do and obviously get justice for my case, which I did. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't gone through that process and mentally built myself up along with the physicality and emotionally and spiritually. And so why it's so important for the psychosocial support and the counseling, uh, so that when with the PTS does happen, uh, we can handle it and we know how to tackle it. But more importantly, is that when the trauma happens to our body, we prevent the larger type or the worst type of PTS that could happen at a later stage. But more importantly, teaching ourselves to deal and cope with what has happened with us. And many of us, it, it, some of us, it doesn't happen. Some of us, it takes a long time. Some of us go through a lot of denial um, and we block out. Trauma, trauma has the ability to block out certain things from your mind. Um, it blocks out your, your, your voice and your, your, your ability to speak out. And so if you do know somebody that's going through it, if it's happening to you or if it is you, be gentle on you. Find your mechanisms that will help you cope. Find your ways of healing. And don't feel bad or, or apologize uh, if the pain comes back, if you are triggered, if you do suffer from PTSD. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It means that you're processing the pain. Remember, the pain was inflicted on you. And remember, it was and never will be your fault.